Hello everyone, welcome back to Game of Night. Today is a little bit of a different video. We're going to talk about Unity and Godot. Uh, face cams on, hello. I just want to discuss a few things. Uh, mainly I'm just going to get my opinion out of the way at the start. Uh, I think the Unity changes are bad, but I don't think they'll affect the majority of users. I know Unity released the statistics where they said it'll only affect 10%. I don't believe that. It's definitely going to be more than 10% that's affected. There's a lot of um, games on Unity that does well, especially on mobile. I can see a lot of mobile games getting completely screwed over, so I'm not going to agree with Unity saying only 10% will be affected. And the other big thing is a lot of people do game development and have a dream that their game is going to blow up. Got games like Among Us, Valheim, Fall Guys, all those games are games that just some popular streamers and YouTubers played and overnight it got millions of sales. If that happens to you, your dream game somehow blows up, even if it's not that big, but still you get a couple hundred thousand people playing your game, then giving Unity all that money is a pretty big blow. So I think overall it's bad because it kind of demotivates anyone's dream for having the game blow up because they know it's going to be a big tax on it. All right, now let's get on to the video. What I want to talk about is Godot 3D and what it's like for a Unity developer for Godot 3D. I use Unity for over a year, and so far I'm just going to say straight away, I prefer Godot 3D over Unity 3D. Now, I'm going to get into some points, lots of cons, lots of pros, well, not that many, but I'm just going to talk about some. I'm not going to be biased towards Godot. I'm going to tell you straight up, hey, you might struggle with this and that. Uh, there might be these issues. Both have their pros and cons, both engines, so nothing's perfect. But I'm just going to talk about why you should use Godot over Unreal Engine specifically if you are someone who loves Unity. And I mean really enjoys Unity. You chose Unity over Unreal Engine because you like Unity's interface, how it works, what it's like. Godot has a very similar vibe in some regards. That's why I'm saying specifically for Unity developers, come to Godot instead of Unreal if you love Unity, because it's the same vibe, everything feels the same once you get used to it. Now, starting off, I'm going to just say some of these cons can be a little bad, and the worst one is, but it also has its own pros, but I'm just going to say it, the asset store. Of course, we don't have the Unity asset store in Godot. It's not as popular. We don't have millions of assets, and no matter what you search for, there's going to be some game asset that can help you. Just pay a little bit of money and there you go, saved you a bunch of time. That's not really on Godot. That there are some assets and they're free, um, but it still needs some work. But here's where the pro comes in. You can make something that can blow up. Let's say you make in Unity, you have Map Magic, a 3D terrain tool. A lot of people use it, does procedural generation, also just generates really nice terrains easily with a kind of um a visual scripting editor, it's, it's just very nice. It's like making a shader, but you make a nice terrain. Now, in Godot, that doesn't exist yet. So if you want to make something that can blow up, be really popular, if you make that in Godot, who knows? Overnight, a bunch of YouTubers can review it, and now you have this amazing package everybody uses in Godot 3D. Just a little example. So I'm just saying, yes, there's not a lot of assets for you, but also, if you do make something really cool, a lot of people may end up using it. So just take that with what it comes with. And now the other big thing is FBX. Godot 4 and onwards so far doesn't officially support FBX anymore. You can install a uh, extension from the Godot web website that just re-implements that support. And then you can import your FBX files, you know, fine. Uh, th there's some little issues that may come up here and there, but nothing too bad. And um, that's about that. Uh, it's not too terrible. The only big issue of that is uh, itch or any other asset uh, website where you're going to download stuff. A lot of those assets only come in FBX format. I'd say at least 30% of 3D assets I've downloaded from itch in the past have only been in FBX format. So it's very annoying when you have to import it into Blender, export it again in OBJ or whatever format, and then import it into Godot or install the extension in every single 3D project. I know it can be annoying. So I'm just going to tell you that right now, if you are someone that basically only uses uh, assets because you just like the programming and like actually making the game. You don't really care about making assets. It's just for the sake of learning and stuff. Uh, you can have those issues. But again, the extension installation, very straightforward, very easy. Um, and there's not a lot that goes wrong. 
Now, the third thing, but not least, bone rigs can be a little broken at times. Uh, it's something to do with the root bones, but you'll see there's lots of farms on it, lots of fixes for it. And all in all, it's not too bad. I'd say 80% of the bone rigs I've tried and get out works, but there are the odd ones that just do not work because the root bone is messed up. And before someone says that might be a messed up bone rig or something, it works in Unity, it works in Unreal. So it doesn't work in Godot because the root bone just doesn't import properly. Something goes wrong. And yeah, but it's not too bad. Every Mixamo animation I've seen works in Godot. Uh, lots of the popular assets, bone rigs work. They're properly made and just work fantastically in Godot. Uh, but again, some of those more low-end assets that may work in Unity can struggle in Godot if there are some things that the uh, creator of that asset hasn't set up perfectly. So there might be some issues with the root bone specifically. I'm just telling you, in case you ever do a bone rig and you wonder what's going on, it's broken, check your, bone, uh, check your root bone. That might be the issue. And now the fourth issue, but this one is very simple fix. It's not even really an issue. If you make an animation, uh, 3D specifically, this doesn't happen in 2D. Uh, if you change the rotation of something in the keyframes in the editor, so let's say you have a bunch of keyframes in your animation timeline, and you click on the keyframe, and you change the number from 89 degrees to 102.4, uh, you'll get an error. It'll tell you something about it being not being normalized, and um, I've seen a lot of people having this issue. Again, lots of forums, lots of Reddit posts, a lot of people have this issue. But the easy fix is what you're meant to do is just actually keyframe the object's rotation as you're animating the object. Like, don't go into your actual timeline and edit the keyframes. Just move your object where you want it to be, rotate it, go into the timeline, right click your rotation, and click Create Key, and it'll work. So it's not too bad. You just have to have a little bit of a different workflow. And it hasn't always happened. There's been the odd occasion where changing a rotation was fine. So I'm not too sure what it is. Haven't looked into it too much. But again, I've seen quite a few people having issues with it. Might be a simple fix, but I just haven't had the issue quite a lot lately. So it's okay. But I'm just letting you know because you don't want to run into these things without knowing about it and then just instantly think, well, this is a terrible game engine. Um, but yeah, that's it. Those are the only four cons so far after almost, no, it's, it's over six months of using Godot after using Unity for a year. Those are my cons. So if you want to list your cons for Unity, I can list a lot more than four for over a year. Uh, who knows, maybe I'll run into something else with Godot, but so far it's been great. Uh, there's no compiling, so you can alt tab back in and out, in and out, change your script as much as you want, as fast as you want. No loading, so that saves time. I know in Unity you can turn it down quite a bit. I have a video about how to fix your load times in Unity, make it a little bit faster. But of course, it's still not instant. So in Unity, if you're going to debug and you have to tab back in and out, and it's every time it's a five second or 10 second compile time, and you do that seven times and you're already frustrated because your code's not working and you're trying to fix it, it doesn't help. It's really annoying when you have to wait every single time. So big thing for me about Godot. Another thing, GDScript, amazing. I actually love it. Uh, I, I still really love C Sharp. It's one of my favorite languages by far. Uh, I use Python, GDScript, and C Sharp. Uh, but I'd say C Sharp will stay my favorite because it's just something about the syntax that I like. But GDScript is definitely nicer. It's more user-friendly. It's easier to read. It's uh, much less effort. Um, again, C Sharp is just a personal preference, but overall, I actually think GDScript is better. But yeah, so GDScript is very similar to Python. If you know Python, you can do GDScript. Of course, there's some syntax and some keywords you might not know, but of course, that's with any language. But I just mean the syntax, how things are formatted, it's almost the exact same as Python. So that can also help you if you're worried that, oh, you won't learn anything from using GDScript. You can basically pick up Python within a week or so of trying if you know GDScript. Like it, it's just very similar and nice. Uh, another thing I really love is just the interface. Everything is fluid. Everything's nice. You'll really enjoy it. Uh, you, you might like struggle to navigate yourself a little bit at the start because a lot of people will tell you it's the exact same as Unity. And you might look at some tutorials and be like, oh, this looks very similar. Don't. I'd suggest you rather mess around yourself a little bit. Just look at some different things. Uh, just try to figure it out, piece together what is what. Like, okay, this is my inspector, exact same as Unity. There's my file system, cool. 
and then here's my node hierarchy and you're going to be like okay so that's my game object section it's pretty much the exact same also just the way it looks exact same but there are some small differences that will throw you off compared to unity but again everything is nice i really like it and the performance fantastic i i love it the requirements great um you know godot's tiny it's a it's a couple of megabytes like 60 megabytes or something you get this jam-packed powerhouse um of course not as strong as unity or unreal but i'm just gonna let you know performance wise you can search up right now on youtube photorealistic godot project or some high-end godot 3d projects uh, also some terrain projects there's a guy the other day i watched he made a 16 by 16 kilometer massive like huge terrain so that's thousands and thousands of triangles huge beautiful with grass animated grass all the way over for waving texture i mean waving shader so the performance is fine so a lot, a lot of times people tell you oh you know performance 3d it needs some work uh, that's probably because a lot of people haven't used it since Godot 3. And that's completely fair. I don't blame anyone. Uh, when I picked up Godot, I also thought mainly it's going to be a 2D um, game development engine. But 3D has been great. I've had no issues. I'm going to show you in a second example of what I'm working on and show you how unoptimized what I'm working on is, but how smooth it runs. Uh, but yeah, it's great. Uh, everything about it feels nice, smooth. The one thing I'll say is the collision system needs a little bit of work. That's where you'll run into performance issues, but it's not really a performance issue. It's something you just fix in a few seconds. Um, so the thing that will happen is like the other day, I have my bean, my capsule collider on my player. I jump on the corner of a car. My FPS goes to th three or two for a couple of seconds. And um, that's terrible. Obviously, the, the car is... The, the mesh is fine, the play is fine, but for some reason the performance is just wacko with some meshes. And uh, now the easy fix is, and Godot has a lot of nice built-in stuff to fix things, you just right-click and click Create Simplex Mesh, and it'll just be a simplified version of the mesh before, so you don't have to go into Blender, you don't have to make a simplified mesh in Blender and give yourself a headache and get annoyed. Uh, you can just do it straight in Godot. And then it then it just works. So it's just a little bit of trial of error and trying to figure out what is the little fix. But they're very easy fixes to do. So if you ever do run into that once in a while, huge collision performance bug, and this is really like not that often. Like I've been working in 3D for a while. Uh, it's been like twice I've ran into it. And again, I fixed it by right-clicking once and left-clicking once. Problem solved. So it's not too bad. Um yeah that, that's about it so i'm going to show you now my game so here we have my game and you're going to think well you know so far this isn't very impressive um this just looks like a minecraft clone and of course it is so far i'm going to smooth out all these blocks with code later on uh, but i guess this is a little cheat look at how my game looks so far i haven't made a devlog in a while and i wanted to keep it a surprise but i just have to show you how well the performance runs so you see all these blocks that you think, you know, it's just um, six faces. Uh, it's not. It's very badly optimized. Here we are in Blender. I'm going to hit tab. And as you can see, that's terrible. So for every color change you see on these blocks, there's a actual triangle made. So this is, you know, that just that in itself is already like three or five times more than an actual cube would be. Um, so terrible horrendous for performance and as you're going to see now if i press play here might have to give it a sec since i haven't loaded this project yet uh, but yeah so here we go it runs smoothly uh, i'm on a 144 fps monitor and it's the v-sync's capped so this should be 60 fps for you guys for me it's buttery smooth even on rotate everything's nice there's nothing that loads in and chunks the performance and yeah it, it's just great. Uh, I have no complaints. And this leads a lot of performance. Once I actually f fix up those um, models I made, fix up those vertices being wrong and all those extra faces, I could probably make an island 10 times bigger than this and the performance will run like it does right now, just because of the high vertice count that is unnecessary. So yeah, as you can see, all these things run very smoothly, very nicely, and I just love it. 
Um, this is still very prototypish, by the way. Please don't judge it. I'm currently focusing on making the actual mini games, taking a little break from working on this 3D scene of the map and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's that's just all I have to show you. And I hope that is a good enough example um, to Godot. 3D being fine. Again, I know that wasn't like the best example ever. Could have probably shown something cooler, like something of realistic graphics. I actually do have a project that generates a dungeon and each dungeon piece like the walls and stuff have um, 4k resolution textures on everything with a bunch of lighting stuff and metallic and roughness turned up and it can instantiate hundreds of those live with real lighting not pre-baked and there'll be no performance impact uh, there's no cooldown the timer it'll just be an instant just fill it out and it just runs buttery smooth so in case you're worried about 3d Again, I think you can make anything you can make in Godot. Uh, I mean, sorry, anything you can make in Unity 3D, you can make in Godot. I think you should just try it for yourself because, again, the only real performance impact is that collision stuff I talked about, but that is not very often, and it's a super easy fix. So that is the video. I hope you've made a small decision whether or not you like it. Again. You're going to miss the asset store from Unity, but Godot's asset store is growing pretty quickly. You'll see there's more and more YouTube channels coming up reviewing weekly Godot assets coming out, and it's getting better and better, and these are all free. Um, I'll tell you that the other day, a website has come up, and this website allows you to put your Godot assets on sale for money. So if you are interested in actually making money, you can still do that, but of course, it's not going to be as much as Unity because it's not going to be as many people searching for it. Um, on Unity, if you upload something simple like a cool crosshair system of a crosshair that goes bigger and smaller when you sprint or crouch or whatever for an FPS and it's $2, uh, maybe hundreds of people or thousands of people will see that. On Godot, maybe a handful of people are going to see it and maybe three or five people are going to buy it. So it's not the same as Unity, I'm going to warn you, but Godot's popularity is just growing every single year, just more and more people using it. So eventually these assets will become popular. So if you make something good, again, it might blow up. You might get popular over it. People may use your asset quite a lot. So let me know you guys think. If there's any questions you have in the comments, please let me know. Uh, maybe you have some big project you're planning and you're wanting to decide if you're going to use Godot or Unreal and you want to ask, you know, how is this performance going to run? Do you think it'll be okay? Do you think the optimization will be terrible? Just ask and I'll let you know. I've experimented with quite a lot of things and I've watched many, many videos specifically on challenging Godot's 3D engine of performance. Um, I, I know pretty well how well it can handle things. Uh, there's, there's a pretty good video you can find. It's called, I think it's called Godot Minecraft Stress Test or something like that. It's where a guy generates you know, the same generation as Minecraft, chunks, hundreds of blocks, but the exact same as Minecraft. But he just pushes the Godot engine to see how high he can get the render distance, how well he can get the lighting, how many blocks he can get in. And he can get tens of thousands of blocks on screen with no filtering, like faces will not stop showing when they're underground, very unoptimized, and he'll still get over 50 FPS with this terrible optimization and huge amount of renders. Um, and it just runs fine. So if you have any questions about performance, stress tests, uh, multiplayer, stuff like that, I just want to tell you multiplayer in Godot is amazing. You can find a tutorial making multiplayer in Godot in under two minutes. So we make two players that can move on different clients, can move around. You can't do that in Unity in under two minutes. And if you can, you're probably using a package or an asset, or you're just the best Unity developer ever. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.